Our next speaker is also a friend of ASAF. Uh, we got to know him during our last ASAF Rectors Conference and Students Forum in Romania. He comes from, Paza uh, from Kazakhstan and his name is Parkat Yusupianov. Parkat, uh, you are the president of an organization called JIGA, which is a youth organization with persons with uh, disabilities. And you have a very strong background uh, in the nonprofit sector. Over 15 years, you have been an advocate, uh, you have lobbied. Um, to, um, to, um, for capacity building uh, programs for youth with uh, disabilities. You have a background in uh, development policies and practices from the Graduate Institute of Geneva, a Master of Public Administration from the School of Public and Environmental Affairs at Indiana University. Yeah, and with JIGA, you really show the way, you're really inspiring and help your colleagues, your peers in Kazakhstan, but also your Asia Europe peers how we can, uh, how we can uh, collaborate. The floor is yours. Um, absolutely thrilled to hear to you. Just one remark, try to keep it within uh, 10 minutes. Thank you so much, Parker. Thank you so much. Uh, distinguished Murakawa-san, distinguished uh, Your Excellency Kara Owen, uh, dear Leone and SF Secretariat and distinguished conference participants and the guests. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor for me to speak uh, during this conference because this is a very important event for our continent. So uh, my organization, if we move uh, to the next slide, my organization actually deals with the uh, uh, with you know, with the uh, issues of youth with disabilities, and uh, some of our activities are related to the monitoring uh, of the access to higher education for persons with disabilities, and of course we are lobbying for improving the access uh, for persons with disabilities in Kazakhstan and uh, internationally as well. So if we talk about the situation in Kazakhstan, we have about 705,000 uh, uh, persons with disabilities, which comprise about 3.8% of the total population. Uh, and uh, also during the last uh, 10, 15 years, uh, there have been a lot of uh, changes in the area of access to higher education. More students actually could uh, enter universities and accessibility issues uh, are being uh, resolved uh, recently. Actually, there are still issues of equitable access to information, equitable access to infrastructure and knowledge, of course. And actually, at the end, at the end this leads to the uh, low competitiveness of persons with disabilities on the labor market after graduation. So if we move to slide number three, I would say that uh, we established a couple of, a few centers, uh, a few disability support centers in the universities in Kazakhstan. And, uh, but um, at, unfortunately, uh, many others, other universities do not really provide reasonable accommodation and individual approach to persons with uh, different types of disabilities. So, and it results in the following. If we move to the slide number four, we can see the statistics. Uh, the statistics shows that we have about 350 students with disabilities in Kazakhstan. And if we compare it with the general number of students, then we will figure out that it's only 0.08% of the student population. At the same time, for example, in the neighboring Russia, we have uh, uh, about 0.2 percent of such students, and if we take European states, uh, the range is from three to five percent, even higher in Great Britain, and in the United States, it's even uh, higher, like six and uh, plus percent. So uh, the number, the low number of students with disabilities, actually shows that the higher education is uh, not really accessible for these students for this uh, category of marginalized people, and it prevents them from even trying to enter the university. Uh, so if we move to the next slide, uh, those students who are already enter, uh, enrolled actually are facing a lot of barriers at the moment because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, while the first and foremost problem issue, of course, is the internet connection, but it's a systemic 
uh, issue and I believe, I hope that uh, this issue will be solved uh, soon because our government takes a lot of actions to uh, uh, narrow this uh, internet accessibility gap in the country. But at the same time, if we talk about um, the platforms, online platforms and uploaded documents, these are not really accessible for some students or at least some of the platforms and many of the documents uploaded are not accessible for students, especially with visual disabilities. So if we talk about persons with hearing disabilities, actually I would say that uh, in the universities we don't have uh, hired sign language interpreters. That's why now when people are under the uh, lockdown or quarantine, uh, studying online. Actually, these people, persons with hearing disabilities are left behind because even if they can read the text from the instructor, they still cannot really uh, hear what the professor is talking about. And this uh, creates additional uh, lagging behind the schedule. Of course, there are a lot of uh, other uh, issues like, you know, uh, inco incompetency of uh, professors in the area of uh, reasonable accommodation providing, or some of the professors who are uh, more senior, uh, like more senior professors really do not, uh, are, are unwilling to study new information technologies. And actually, as a result, uh, some of them do, do not really know that they have students with disabilities in their online classrooms. And this is another big challenge because students now cannot really directly talk to a professor, a comment, uh, ask to help in this or that, or that situation and to solve this or that individual problem or issue related to access to higher education. Now, since they are online, it's uh, almost impossible to do that. And also uh, many of the students who we talked to complain that the quality of uh, feedbacks for home assignments is uh, got very low because uh, of different reasons. And of course, some disabilities uh, support centers do not support really students with disabilities at these times because many, because many of these centers do not have a, a staff regular staff, they only involve volunteers for student support and this is, and as a result now, uh, no, no one takes responsibility for assisting the students. So can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, so as the lessons, like as there is, as a result, we can uh, see that there are a lot of uh, consequences of such situation. Uh, we've uh, realized that we need to urgently take actions because if we don't take it now, actually we will lose the dead generation of students with disabilities who are studying now in the pandemic and when they graduate, I'm sure they will be uh, very much disadvantaged on the labor market in comparison with their uh, peers uh, without disabilities. Because we can clearly see now that there is a huge gap in information and knowledge and it's broadening, then uh, students don't have a lot of motivation to study uh, online because they don't have good feedbacks. They cannot talk about their individual needs to uh, uh, instructors and faculty members. And uh, as there, some of the students actually, especially those who study massage or study like sports, swimming, physical training are also lagging behind because if they cannot see it so that they cannot do the exercises which the instructors show on Zoom, or uh, adversely, if they cannot hear, then they can't hear the instructions of the uh, faculty member who is uh, taking this or that, uh, conducting this or that, that class. So these are the general actually issues now, and these issues result in the further marginalization of students with disabilities. So if we move to this uh, slide number seven, uh, I can introduce you our vision uh, on how to be, build a better future for students with disabilities, both in Kazakhstan and in Asia. Actually, my uh, vision, our vision is that countries should have a good anti-discrimination legislation like, for example, Sabetsu uh, Kinshiho in Japan or like ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act in the United States, because if we don't have a strong compulsory, I mean, comprehensive legislation base, then it's, it will be difficult to uh, uh, implement policies and practices. Then, uh, since this is uh, gonna take a lot of time, uh, while it's urgently, uh, we are in urgent need to 
uh, amend the Education Act of the Republic of Kazakhstan so that uh, the concepts of inclusive, uh, of, I mean, a reasonable accommodation, stability, support center, and universal design can be included in the legislation. Also, there should be some administrative measures ex uh, against those universities who are failing to provide reasonable accommodations for students with disabilities, especially during the pandemic. And it, this should be uh, legislatively uh, <clears throat> supported. So can we move to the next slide? As far as the policy level or law enforcement level, of course, it's uh, important here for each university to adopt inclusive education guidelines so that uh, all of the stakeholders, including uh, university leaders, students, uh, faculty and staff, students with and without disabilities, clearly see and understand their role in the process of inclusive higher education, especially during the uh, emergency situations like the pandemic. And of course, it's necessary to establish disability support centers where hired uh, professional staff like coordinators, sign language interpreters, and uh, other assistants can ensure that students with uh, different types of disabilities are getting adequate support and again during the pandemic, uh, of course. So can we move to the next slide? This is uh, our final uh, vision on the attitudinal barrier. Actually, uh, it's very important to raise awareness about students with disabilities in different conferences, online events, webinars, because during the pandemic, this group of people, at least in Kazakhstan, is left behind. And also, uh, faculty members should get training on how to rethink their attitude to students with disabilities because they should realize that students with disabilities is an, a very important part of the university diversity, student diversity, and of course, it's uh, a very good asset to uh, implement, to develop and implement different types of university educational programs and services. And of course, disabled persons organizations should be actively involved in the process of assisting students with disabilities, especially during the pandemic, because disabled people's, people's organizations uh, know from the field on how to better serve these types of populations. So if we move to the light, last slide, I would like to finish with the uh, uh, message uh, to, for you to take back home. Actually, uh, without a comprehensive legislation, without uh, reasonable accommodation with, com with a combination of the pandemic, of the COVID-19 pandemic, all these factors actually worsen the marginalization of persons with disabilities in higher education and of course furtherly undermine their uh, competitiveness on the labor, labor market after graduation. So we have to take urgent actions to at least minimize the effects of the pandemic on uh, students with, from marginalized groups, namely from students with disabilities. So thanks so much for your attention.